Following Stevenson's defeat and Eisenhower's re-election, the Kennedy family gathered at Hyannisport for Thanksgiving in 1956. Kennedy and his father, Joe, are huddled in a small study discussing the future. After Kennedy's surge in popularity at the Democratic National Convention, questions arose about a presidential run. Kennedy listed every reason why he believed running for president was a bad idea. His father countered each point one by one. The two went back and forth until the conversation reached a stalemate. Finally, Kennedy uttered four words that would unwittingly change the course of his life. Where do we begin? Somebody once asked him, why do you want to run for president? And his answer, that's where the action is. He wanted to be where the action was. As Kennedy campaigned in 1960, he honed the power of his words. Well, John F. Kennedy knew how to deliver a speech. He was funny, and he gave short speeches. They're witty. They're to the point. They were all, at most, six paragraphs maybe 12. Make them want more. I run for the presidency because, like you, I have strong ideas about what this country must do. I have strong ideas about the United States playing a great role in a historic moment when the cause of freedom is endangered all over the world. These are rhetorical devices to make your words more powerful. But that particular accent and the particular pacing and all of that, I think, I don't think anybody's come anywhere close to it. This is somebody who gives speeches that make people want to get up and march somewhere. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I ask your help. I ask your help in building the United States. I ask your help in reestablishing the prestige and strength of our country. I ask your help. The 1960 presidential race between Kennedy and Nixon would be the first widely televised election in history. If the American people couldn't see their candidate in person, they could watch him from the comfort of their own home. The candidates would debate four times, arguing their case to the nation. The candidates need no introduction. The Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon, and the Democratic candidate, Senator John F. Kennedy. The president gained, America gained, by continuing the dignity, the decency that has characterized us, and it's that that keeps the prestige of America up, not running down America the way Senator Kennedy has been running her down. Much as Richard Nixon has criticized, he mounted the stage of the Republican Party on five separate occasions to accept the nomination for national office three times for president and twice for vice president. He was formidable. I really don't need uh, Mr. Nixon to tell me about what my responsibilities are as a citizen. I've served this country for 14 years in the Congress and before that in the service. I have just as high a devotion, just as high an opinion. You look at the Kennedy-Nixon debate, a Republican running at the center and a Democrat running at the center in 1960 don't disagree on much. And so when people were trying to decide who do they want, you have two people who want the job who are saying they're pretty much gonna do similar things. So then TV becomes that much more important because you're making your decisions based on what does your gut tell you? Kennedy presents very differently than Nixon. And the difference between the crowds the day before that debate and the crowds after that debate, the crowds the next morning heading into Iowa, were enormous. We called them the dancers. The crowds, you, if you look down the street half a mile away, you started to see, as soon as they saw him, you could see the crowd start to jump. I don't think I looked at him as some sort of a sex idol. I looked at him as, a, um, as an energizer. He was, he was the future, he was next. Finally, 
election day had arrived. Kennedy, his wife Jackie, and their two-year-old daughter Caroline were camped out at Hyannisport. Joe Kennedy, the father, uh, had a big place on in Hyannisport, and we were invited to be there on election night as the returns were coming in. And the cohesion among the family it was a beautiful sight. Photographers and reporters are all around them. For well, this is the man who, in the next 24 hours, may become president of the United States, and she, first lady of the land. Jackie was pregnant with John Jr., due at the end of the month. Jackie described the scene as a cold, clear autumn day. She would later remember her husband as restless but quiet, spending some time in the sun and then trying to nap. From the very beginning, it becomes obvious that this is going to be a close election. The television networks have made elaborate preparations to broadcast the election returns as they come in from the different parts of the country. Huge tally boards post the returns as they come in minute by minute, hour by hour. The excitement of being there watching the returns coming in, it was neck and neck all night. I guess the thing I really remember trying to stay up and I'm, come on I'm not gonna stay up till stay up till six o'clock tomorrow morning and find out we still got ten hours to go you know but we stayed up awful late and we had no idea in Illinois the voting will be so close that the lead will go back and forth from one candidate to the other but then this turns into a seesaw battle in quite a few of the states all night long As darkness set over Cape Cod, Kennedy hung up the phone with his brother Bobby after learning the numbers would not be in for hours. He retired to his bedroom. In the morning, Kennedy's closest aide, Ted Sorensen, set out for Kennedy's house, just like any other day in Hyannisport. As he approached, he noticed something was different. Secret Service agents were stationed around the home. John F. Kennedy was the next president of the United States. Kennedy won the election with 303 electoral votes to Nixon's 219. The popular vote was much closer, with Kennedy receiving only 118,000 more votes than Nixon. To all Americans, I say that uh, the next four years are going to be difficult and challenging years for us all. The election uh, may have been a close one, but I think that there is general agreement by all of our citizens that a supreme national effort will be needed in the years ahead to move this country safely through the 1960s. I ask your help in this effort, and I can assure you that uh, every degree of mind and spirit that I possess will be devoted to the long-range interests of the United States and to the cause of freedom around the world. <laughs> 